Good morning, good morning, and good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen? And how is everybody today? Awesome. Blessed and highly flavored. Praise God. I was instructed this morning, actually during worship, that the Lord said, I want to release a warrior anointing Friday night. So get ready. Amen. <laughs> oh, glory to God. How many of you know we're in the last days? If you don't, you do now. The reason why you don't know is because you're disconnected. And it's time to get connected. Amen? Amen. There are... There are areas in our life which God has required not only cooperation, but urgency. He's trying to get everyone quickly to position because of what's getting ready to happen. I'm not going to go in great detail about things that are getting ready to happen. I can tell you that it is. Remember, judgment was in the house of God. It still remains in the house of God, but it's been released into the world. So God is judging his people, and while he's judging his people, he's judging the world. But the people that are still of the world that are called his body will be judged according to the world. So he's trying to get the people in the body to be in, get involved in the military. Because the people of the body still are carnal. They don't know him the way they're supposed to. They, don't know, they only know Jesus as Savior. But they don't know him as Father, as King, as Lord, and as Commander-in-Chief. So in this area, that's why he says, Seek me with all of your heart and all of your might, and you'll find me. And the Father says, I search for true worshipers. No, there's a pla place in God's presence, and we'll talk more about this, but where we let go. It's almost like a strong, if you can picture a strong storm. Now, this may sound funny, but blowing off all your clothes. I mean, you can't hold on to nothing. Because before God, we're naked. Amen. And so many people are still trying to hold on to their selves Amen. and not let go yet. Amen. So they can never really press in and get there. They can never make that connection until they truly let go. See, there's a difference between worshiping the music and worshiping the king. People that play the air guitar, they still worship in the music. Because they're not connected yet. And many people just worship the music. Oh, that's good music. Where's the presence? See, they nullify God's presence and they miss it. So in this, we've got to get to that place. Where reality of who he is and who we are must become tangible to you. There must be a reality that what is influencing you. What's influencing you is surrounding your atmosphere. There's no words that can be spoken without a tongue. Somebody get it? That's why the word says that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Or there's an unseen tongue that can take control of your atmosphere. They're called demons, spirits. They carry a presence. They carry a personality. And their focus is to influence us 
so we can stay out of rank, out of divine order, and stay out of God's presence. Why? Because in his presence you are strength. In his presence there's deliverance and healing. In his presence there's power. There's an anointing, there's a mantle that gets put on us. And until you reach that place, you try to work in your own strength. There's not a true surrender. And we have nothing but problems. Because everything we do, we're doing it in our own strength, and it always comes back because that's called works of the flesh. Anything that is not led by the Spirit is flesh. So what has to happen, why does the atmosphere change around us when we begin to worship the Lord with a true heart and pure heart? Because we're releasing, a prof it's a prophetic word that is being released. And we've got to be quick to release prophetic words instead of grumble and complain and blame. Instead of justify and reason. That's how Eve blew it. The voice that constantly justified. See, we need to change our atmosphere. And it needs to be an atmosphere of the Lord, nothing else. See, in his atmosphere, there's no fear, there's no worry, there's no concern. There's direct love. There's complete trust. So for me and you, there's a prophetic release that is required wherever we go, whatever we do, as soon as you get up in the morning. Whether you're driving, wherever you are, there should be a prophetic release. Not a soulish release. It's a prophetic release. It's by the Spirit of God. There's a difference because so many people are still living in the soul. And the soul is dictating them and what to do. How many of y'all know the soul has a voice? The problem is people don't, they can't discern the voice of the soul or the voice of the spirit. And 2 Peter chapter 1. <clears throat> Everything that the enemy does manipulates us by emotion. He manipulates us with a voice that... It, presses a button of emotion in us. 2 Peter chapter 1. And what does emotion do? It releases a feeling. Then people go, I don't feel like it. You'll never sense the presence of God until you come out of looking for a feeling. Because you're coming out of looking at yourself. And you begin to look for him, then all of a sudden his presence comes. If you're looking for the feeling, you'll never get it. Not until you look for him. It says you don't seek the feeling of God, you seek the presence of God. It says seek his face. See, so many people are going after a feeling when if you'll just worship him, his presence come, and the greatest feeling of peace, joy, and righteousness is there. Next thing you know, you have tears in your eyes. Your heart is melted. You are so grateful that he's chosen you, that he's called you, that he's forgiven you. In verse 16, 2 Peter chapter 1, Verse 16. Is everybody there? Yes, Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. For we did not follow cunning, despised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellence of Glory, excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am what? Well, please, don't you want to hear that from God for you? It's my beloved son, my beloved daughter, whom I, I am well pleased. And we heard this voice 
which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. Where were they? On the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. What he was saying here, don't follow deceptive doctrines that carry no light. Because they were following deceptive doctrines. See, the... The voice of the stranger carries a deceptive doctrine. It's called a doctrine of demons. He tries to keep you away from the true light. He'll do everything he can to prevent you from getting connected. Don't follow deceptive doctrines that carry no light. They only carry darkness, and it keeps you in dark, keeps you in fear. The prophetic word of of light and truth was confirmed. In other words, when it means confirms, it was released. These are words of light released by the righteous hearts inspired and backed by the Holy Spirit of individuals. Prophetically, people always think of things of the future. Prophetic release is not just future. It's penetrating the past. It's penetrating the present. And it's penetrating the future events, which brings warnings and brings direction. As you and I worship the Lord, the words come up. We're not worshiping the Lord. We're releasing a prophetic release. Amen. Prophetic words into the atmosphere. Then the atmosphere changes. If the atmosphere changes, so do you. But if your atmosphere is not changed then you won't change. And these spirits feed off of emotion. That's how they get fed. So if you're still walking in fear, bitterness, unforgiveness, they're constantly, that's an atmosphere around you that you carry. And you can sense it on people if you're carrying the atmosphere of Christ. In Revelation chapter 12, they won't sense it, but you will. Prophetic release. We are in a time and season right now where it's got to be constant. One of the things the Lord is checking is our consistency in everything. If we are not consistent, he can't trust us. If a person only does what he feels like, he'll never trust you. In verse 7, Revelation 12, verse 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And war broke out in heaven. Hello, that war is still going on, just to let you know. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. This was in God's realm, the throne room, the third, what we call the third heaven. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He does what? Is it still under deception? Yeah, so the world is ruled by deception, isn't it? Who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now the salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, which would change your atmosphere, has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcome. How did they overcome? They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. They overcame by the prophetic release 
of their testimony, which is salvation. The testimony of the power of the blood of Jesus and the Spirit, they were, they were in a place of confession, they were in a place of declaration, and they were in a place of decree. They were carriers of the words of life, light, and truth. When you are saved, that is a part of your salvation. You are now a light barrier. Does everybody understand? Again, they overcame by the prophetic release. That's what testimony is, isn't it? So what's God doing? Constantly building your testimony. You will go through trials and tribulations for a testimony. You're building your testimony. Why? Because the enemy finds multiple ways to attack you. <laughs> and he's not stupid. Amen? He can outwit any believer at any moment unless they're filled with the Spirit of God. And they carry the atmosphere of heaven, that anointing called the Christ. Jesus carried the atmosphere of heaven all the time. Does everybody understand that? That's why he was called the Christ. That's why everything he spoke was according to the will of the Father, never glorified himself. And Psalm 119, Prophetic release. That's why we have a penetrating prayer booklet to release prophetically. Kick the devil in the head. Psalm 119, 105. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. While we're speaking, what are we doing? There's a prophetic release. Why? Because what you speak is what you eat. You're sowing in the spirit, you're going to reap life. It says here, your word is a what? Is the lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, if it's, wait a minute now, how is that going to be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path if you don't release it out of your mouth? It won't. That's why people stumble. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Except I pray. Listen, when you pray, do you release a prophetic? Yeah, it's a prophetic release. Except I pray the free will offering of my what? My mouth. O oh Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continued in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. In other words, a word of light is a lamp to our steps and directions, it is the direction of our destiny as we prophetically release these things. It's the path. What's happening, it's infiltrating messages into a dark place. Does everybody understand it? In other words, when you go in a room, you may hit furniture unless you turn on the light if it's dark in there. How many of y'all know you can get very bruised? <laughs> Amen. Bumping stuff, hitting your head, whatever it is, you know. Or somebody moves something that they shouldn't have and you bump into it. You know. Anyways. Praise God. <laughs> so these are infiltrating messages with the presence of God and the power of his glory into an atmosphere of oppression, of deception and darkness. It will turn everything around. Everything around. You know, when we first come in out of the world, we carry every stinking thing there is. You may be saved, but you ain't free yet. Amen. Amen. So there's a process of being free. And there's a process of what we call regeneration. To be regenerated back into his image. 
everybody okay? Let's go to uh, verse 113. Let's speak it. I hate the double-minded and I love your laws. This law is word. Yeah, how about his testimony? All of these are his word. His commands are his word. Verse 14. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your word that I may live. And do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Hold me up and I shall be safe, and I shall observe your statutes continually. You reject all those who stray from your statutes. What did, okay, what did he say? I'm reje he's rejecting those who stray from what? Releasing the prophetic. Why? Because they're not bringing light into places. So darkness is overtaking them. You reject all those who stray from your statutes, for their deceit is what? Falsehood. You put away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. It says he hated the disconnected, the unstable, the promoters of self and prideful individuals that stay away. That's why he said it, stay away. The law, the commandments, the statutes, and testimonies and judgments, these are word of a prophetic release. We are to stay away from traditions of worldly men and women that are carnal. The Lord warns us about that. Associations bring what? Impartations. Amen. Go to Titus 3. Prophetic release. Man, if we need to get a prophetic release, we need to start doing it now and constantly. Amen. Every morning. That's why the word says, pray shall be continually on my mouth. You're constantly changing the atmosphere wherever you go. But too many people are caught up in themselves. They're still looking at them. They're fighters for their life instead of fighters for his life. In verse 1, Titus 3, verse 1, it says, Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly, through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by His grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And this is a faithful saying. And these things I want you to affirm constantly or release constantly. That those who have be believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But again, avoid foolish disputes. Do disputes come out of your mouth? Yes. Genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the divisive man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is warped and sinning, being self-condemned. Again, in this, there is a process of regeneration into his image. And by, listen, until you're changing into more and more of his image, you can't fulfill destiny. The destiny is for his image, not for carnality. It's for his image. That's why those who are led by the Spirit are called sons and daughters. So as we are led by the Spirit, filled by the Spirit, and releasing prophetic, we are establishing an atmosphere around me and you all the time. This is an, an atmosphere of reverence, honor, and respect to the Lord, which is called the fear of the Lord. 
This process of regeneration is into his image. It is the fulfillment of destiny. It's obtained through prophetic release and obedience. It is obtained through what? Prophetic release and obedience. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. So the process of regeneration never stops. So you and I have never made it. <laughs> Until we get home and we hear, enter in my good and faithful servant. Then you can go, hallelujah, I made it. <laughs> In fact, you won't even get an opportunity to say that. You'll be praising God like crazy. 2 Timothy, verse 4, or chapter 4, I'm sorry, verse 1. Let's speak it together. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Preaching the word is doing what? Speaking, right? So are, are you uh, doing a prophetic release? Yes. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. In other words, don't wait till you feel like it. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That is here now. Amen? But according to their own desires, their own emotions, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables and all kinds of garbage out there. And there's plenty of it. You turn the TV on, turn the radio on, there's all kinds of fake news fake this, fake that. It's all a bunch of lies. And people are believing in them. They, they, they spend more time trying to prove what they believe instead of what is truth. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. It says, be, be what? Watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry or your destiny. Release his light, life, and truth. That's what he's saying. With a prophetic release of his words, your testimony, regardless, his promises, regardless of how you feel, and fulfill your destiny. When you speak, you speak light. Remember, what you speak is what you eat. Amen? But light does something also powerful. It brings sight. Everyone say, light, light. brings sight. When you, when you speak his words of life and light and truth, again, light brings sight, life brings life. Amen? His words bring light. And truth brings freedom. The process of regeneration and infiltration of darkness must continue. You're constantly changing your atmosphere by a prophetic release. And by the prophetic release, you are being regenerated constantly over and over more and more to his image and likeness. So you can't go by how you feel. Now, let me share something with you. There is nothing wrong with confessing something. Amen? In other words, I might have a cold. Amen? I may not feel good. But that doesn't mean I'm going to claim it. I'm not going to lie about it. Some of you may ask you, how are you feeling? I tell them, blessed and highly favored. Because I really don't want to go there. But if you have to go to the doctor, you can't go to the doctor and tell the doctor, I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> He's going to bring a psychiatrist in. <laughs> so you've got to tell them the truth, hello? It doesn't mean you're claiming it. Don't get granola, you know? So what you're doing, you're confessing, but you're not proclaiming, you're not accepting it. Yeah, I've got this problem, I got this problem, but I'm trusting God. Amen? Then you begin to attack it. 
And that's what you're confessing. You're letting out of your mouth a prophetic release to attack. Why? Because you're releasing light, you're releasing life, and you're releasing truth. Remember, truth brings freedom, which also brings healing. You're bringing light to see. Light, look at sickness is darkness, man. Does everybody understand it? It's darkness. It's painful. Especially emotional. Emotional pain is probably the worst. But you can't focus on your pain. Amen? You can take that pain and use it and turn it around for glory. Hallelujah. James 3. Learn from your pain. <laughs> Search out why you got the pain. You know, we are a self-contained entity known as the temple of God. Everything is what we allow to happen. None of us as spirit-filled believers have no excuse. We just allow it to happen or we choose. But again, because of that, the atmosphere is different around other people. If you have an atmosphere of peace, joy, and righteousness, praise God. Oh, happy day. <laughs> Verse 13. Is everybody there? Yeah. Chapter 3, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not stand from above, but it what? It's earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. For the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypo hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. It is a prophetic release, and it will increase. When you're doing a prophetic release, what's going to happen is you're going to increase wisdom and understanding. Why? Because you're releasing light, you're releasing truth, and you will eat it. So what begins to happen when you're releasing prophetic words from the Lord this prophetic release will increase wisdom and understanding. And what happens when wisdom and understanding begin to increase in your life, you will increase in discernment. And what's the discernment? The discernment is, doesn't mean that you're, you know, checking everyone out. It's the discernment of the unseen. You're able to discern what's influencing you. Isn't that the number one most vital important thing? What's influencing you? Amen. Well, what's your thoughts? What's influencing you? Why are you thinking the way you're thinking? Why are you feeling the way you're feeling? Where is that coming from and what's the root of it? See, you will be able to discern. In fact, you'll be able to discern before it even starts again. Hmm. There is much prophetic, or what we say, demonic release. How do you, does everybody understand that they are praying against you every day? That they are releasing and calling up and, and conjuring uh, demonic forces from the earth and coming up on the earth every single day. People don't realize that even on music, they pray over the music. For, well, I think it's 12 days. They pray over the music, 12 witches, 12 days. Something like that. And then what they do is they conjure up every demonic force and attach it to the music. 
So when somebody goes out and buys the music and begins to listen to it, immediately they're attached to that demon. And they don't even realize it. That's why it's important not to get involved in secular music when you come out of the world. Because then you're still attached to the world and the devil still has an attachment to you. It's amazing how many people begin to challenge God after they get saved. They start listening to their old music. Whatever it may be. Country, rock, it, don't, it doesn't matter. It's if attached to hell, hell will be attached to you. Is everybody okay? Again, there's much prophetic demonic release. Most of it is through music and media. Now they're doing it in schools. You know, you, they'll, they'll let children do uh, Ouija boards and, uh, and all kinds of other stuff, read horoscopes and, and go after all other religions. But, man, you mention Christianity or carry a Bible in school, they don't want you to. Because the demonic influ influence has overtaken everything. There is a high level of battle going on right now. High level. There's not enough prophetic release to bring light and truth. Believe me, you're going to see judgment come on many preachers. God has warned. Especially individuals that are still promoting the worldly way and not godly way. In Psalm 77. Oh, happy day. Psalm 77. In verse 10. Let's speak it together. And I said this in my anguish, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate in all your work and talk of your deeds. So when you're talking of his deeds, are you releasing prophetic? Yes. And talk of your deeds. De de deeds. Your way, O oh God, is in the what? Your way, O oh God, is where? In the sanctuary, who is so great as God, as our God? Who are the, who are the God? You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. You have with your right arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Now we know when he's speaking about them, he's speaking about his body. So we see that the, he declares his deeds by the prophetic release, by attending fellowship. Hello. Is there a prophetic release going out right now? Yes. Amen. By attending the fellowship in his presence in the sanctuary, he releases his presence, his joy, and his strength. Strength comes by corporate worship. Amen. Psalm 73. Did you ever go through something and find out that the message was released prior to what you just went through. It wouldn't have been nice if you got the message before you went through it. <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 73 and verse 15. Let's speak it. If I had, if I had said, I will what? Speak thus. Behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I what? I understood their end. So remember we just talked about because we're releasing a prophetic word when we're worshiping. What happens? Understanding comes. Wisdom comes. Then discernment comes. Sight comes, better hearing comes, better feeling comes. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> so 
Now your atmosphere has changed. But I can tell you, as soon as you go out that door, <coughs> there's another atmosphere waiting for you. <laughs> Understanding came by the presence of God <laughs> in the sanctuary. It is a process of regeneration by prophetic release. Psalm 20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 20, verse 1. Let's speak it. May the Lord answer you in a day of what? Trouble. In a day of trouble. I'm not going to ask anybody if they've ever been in any trouble. <laughs> May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary. sanctuary. And strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Help from where? The sanctuary. It isn't the sanctuary, the building that brings help. Does everybody understand that? It's when we gather together and carry and change. We see, we're exchanging our presence for his presence. We're exchanging our atmosphere his, for his atmosphere. And then when we come together in unity in the atmosphere is Christ, how many of you know nobody can outwit Christ? Does everybody get it? How many of you know that it is Christ, the anointing, that destroys everything of the enemy? So when the anointing of Christ comes, we're different. Amen? One of the things that begin to happen is you become humble. Humble. You realize we're nothing but a peanut out here in this universe. <laughs> and God is so big and there isn't anything he can't do. Amen? Amen? Help comes from the sanctuary. 1 Corinthians 13. You know, David... And his psalm would always write, I, I couldn't wait for the doors that are open in the sanctuary because of the presence of God. And verse 13. No, what did I say to go? Psalm 20? All right. <laughs> verse 11, sorry. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Is everybody there? Good. Oh, happy days. Let's speak it together. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. Hello. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. Grumble, complain, want, 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 want. I thought as a child, me, 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 me. And I understood as a child, zip. But when I became <laughs> filled with the Holy Spirit, man, I put away what? Childish things. See, some people just ain't put them away yet. They're still holding on. <laughs> For now we, we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide in faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Why? Because perfect love casts out all fear. Spoke the word. Understand the word. Thought is the word. Interpret. Again, when we were little flesh creatures or adult flesh creatures, we didn't understand anything about God. We thought we might have known God. Some of us became quite religious, but we were still bound. Amen? But only through the regeneration of the Holy Spirit by prophetic release can we change and can the atmosphere change and can wisdom and understanding 
and discernment would be manifest. And I'm going to close with Romans 16. Glory to God. Romans 16, verse 25. Everybody okay? Yes, now to him who is able to what? Establish you according to my gospel in preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began but now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith. To God alone wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever and ever. In other words, the prophetic scriptures for obedience to faith. The word says that faith comes by what? Hearing, Hearing not thinking. <laughs> you will not out with the devil thinking. You out with him by speaking. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray for each and every one here today that the seed that's been imparted, that they become bold, strong in the Lord, and release your prophetic words to change their atmosphere and others. In Jesus' name.